Today, the public can pay their respects to Chris Beatty. He was shot and killed while there was protests and riots going on downtown just a couple weeks ago. The wake will be from noon to six, that final visitation in downtown that's open to the public at Pavilion at Pan Am. Just 25 people allowed in at a time. Everyone going to wear those face masks and maintain six feet of social distancing. Then tomorrow, that is the private funeral. And again, the final visitation that will be streamed online. And Chris played football for IU. He was also known as a businessman, a pillar in the community, a friend here at Fox 59. Spent a lot of time here with us. One of his dearest best friends is Joey Wagner. And he's joining us live this morning to talk about Chris and his legacy. Joey, good morning to you. Morning, Angela. How are you? I'm doing, um, you know, I think we all, um, we know how Chris would want us to be. He would want, well, he, he would want us to be smiling and happy, right? No doubt. And I'm sure when I start crying at some point this weekend, he's going to tell me to stop. Let's talk about what it has been like for you. You are one of his best friends, but you're also really making sure that this final goodbye is done in a way that is worthy <laughs> of such yeah. a, a wonderful man. Um, tell yeah, me what it's know, been like. Um, me and Chris became best friends, you know, over the past 20 years, and um, he's a part of me. I was a part of him, and you know, we're kind of the same. You know, I, I, I'm in Louisville, he's in Indianapolis, and we pretty much do the same thing. And I think that's why we became so compatible um, as friends. Uh, and obviously, with me having an event company, and um, you know, for the past 15 years, Chris has been a part of that family, been a part of that event company with me. He works all my major events, from the Kentucky Derby to the Breeders' Cup. Uh, we also produced Muhammad Ali's funeral. Um, so when Muhammad passed, um, Chris was a part of my team and he was right there, right beside me um, every step of the way. So, you know, he was a special person to me. Um, it's been a rough couple weeks, but, um, you know, I'm here this weekend with my entire Muhammad Ali team that helped out on the funeral and uh, we're going to send him out right. Yeah, and you see uh, Muhammad Ali's casket. You see Chris right there um, carrying it. And um, I know that was an important moment for him to be able to honor that man in that way. I want to talk to you a little bit about that part. Um, we want to celebrate at noon to six um, downtown. I know a, a lot of people from here will be there, but there's this part still that we don't know what happened to Chris and why he died. And I know it's hurtful, too, to know that there's somebody out there that took our friend's life. Right. What do you want people to know? You know, I think the biggest thing, um, you know, he died a hero. You know, that's the, you know, if anybody knew Chris, I mean, that's how he was. You know, when I first got the phone call um, that night, you know, I knew something wasn't right. I knew he wasn't out there rioting or protesting or doing anything like that. You know, and it even came across my mind that he had to be out there helping someone. You know, I said he has to have been out there helping someone. And, you know, Chris was going out to his car and, you know, saw two girls getting robbed and, um, and tried to help him. And, you know, it was wrong place at the wrong time for him. Um, and it sucks. It's, 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 we hate it. And, you know, I just think, you know, hopefully soon the, the police department starts, you know, to, to catch these guys and, um, you know, we can get justice for Chris, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we, we created this hashtag live like Chris. And, you know, I think that, you know, my challenge to everyone watching right now is, you know, when you wake up every single morning, you look in that mirror and you ask yourself, you know, what can you do to do to make yourself better? And, you know, what can you do to make someone else's day better? But at the same time, how can you live like Chris? And I think that, you know, that's important to him. And um, some people might not know what that means, but if you knew Chris, I mean, you know, he never had a, you know, he, I, I, in the 15, 16, 17 years we've been friends, you know, I've never seen him get mad. Um, he didn't really have that mean bone in his body. And, um, you know, he was all, like you said, he always had that smile on his face. Well, I'll see you tomorrow for sure at the funeral. And I know many folks will be saying goodbye um, today and tomorrow. We loved Chris. And if you're a friend of Chris, then we're a friend of yours, Joey. And we'll always be here for that. you too. And um, we're heartbroken. And um, we'll let people know too how to watch the live stream for tomorrow, and then folks can go today noon to six. And uh, yeah, and you know, and today we just ask people please be patient. Yeah. Um, obviously, COVID um, has challenged a lot of us over the past few months, and obviously, it's challenging us for this funeral this weekend. Um, but today on the visitation, we're going to get people in um, as quick as we can, and we're going to do our best. So just please be patient. I know, I know, my man wanted us to sell out sell out Lucas Oil <laughs> Stadium for about seventy thousand people. <laughs> Um, that's just how Chris was, but obviously we can't do that because of COVID. So uh, if you're coming down there to the pavilion today, we're going to get you in as quick as we can. Um, and just, uh, just please be patient. We appreciate everybody coming out and supporting uh, this, today and this weekend. Joey, thank you. No, thank you. Ray. Appreciate